All right, back again with the 2020 Yamaha Raptor 700 rebuild. In the last video, we diagnosed that there was a bad scoring in the cylinder, so actually ended up looking into a few different options and sent that out to Millennium Technologies. So they recoded that for me, new, brand new Nicosil. Pretty awesome, actually, and they're pretty quick to get that back to me. Went and got all brand new OEM parts. So got new piston in here, got new rings, gaskets, even new clips for the piston. And then of course this is our timing chain cover. So my plan is to actually powder coat this cylinder here. Then we can start putting everything back together and hopefully she'll be running at the end of the day. I wanted to show you something. So I was doing a little bit of digging around in here and looking at all that crap in that air box. I really don't like that because that means it probably went mudding and got submerged. So doing some more looking and I actually pulled out the air intake. And I don't know if you can see that great, but look at that. It makes me almost think that it was ran without an air filter for a little bit. The intake of the throttle body just covered in dirt. So, yeah, that kind of stung just a little bit when I found out that. So it got me looking at this air filter setup. And I did some research, and I think it's about the cheapest aftermarket intake you can get on eBay. The nice CNC air box lid. So I'm actually going to rip this out. Right here, this is the cheap China air filter. Ordered up new K&N that has the same specs as that, and... Hopefully that K&N is designed just a little bit better and prevents any more crap from ever getting through there again. So to get started for powder coating, what I do is I gotta mask off all of this, all of the stuff where I don't wanna get powder in. So I'll cut out this sheet right here. And then I'll take this sticker off. Lay this down right there on top. A little bit of heat will make it stick a little bit better. So then what I'll do is I'll go around and cut around the edges here. This is a little bit of a boring process. So I might speed this up a little bit. All right, everything's masked and everything's wiped down. Now we're gonna get to powder coating. I'm gonna use a metallic black. We're gonna coat this cylinder right now. Now that that's in there, we'll wait a few seconds for that part to warm up enough so we can take that masking off. While we're waiting, I think I wanna pull this out and clean this up and then try to clean up our throttle body as well.
I think we got a fair amount of dirt out of that throttle body. I think it's time to move on to that other piece now, that intake boot. I think I'm actually going to take this air box out quick too. I am going to take this metal part out here, this intake and air filter flange. I'd like to, I don't think I'm going to powder coat it because I like having the anodizing in the flow of the intake just so nothing could ever possibly come off. So got some cleaned up parts here and I also have this. So that's our fresh powder coated cylinder all ready to go on. Got that fresh powder coat on there. All the surfaces masked off. I have to come back and I'm just gonna wipe a little bit of some of those away. But yep, that's ready to go on. I washed up the air box. Got all that dirt crap out of there. I was actually looking at this. Um, I think they just had it on the wrong way. So this ring right here on the air box, I think that's supposed to mate with this O-ring. So I'm gonna put it on like that. And then when I put my K&N on right in there, you'll never even be able to tell that it's a nice CNC China part. So that'll work fine. And same outer diameter for the air box, or for the boot as it is the filter. So that'll go on nice and easy. Cleaned up all that stuff in there. I don't even know if you can probably see it, but I actually used a toilet brush to clean out what was in there. Air box lid all cleaned up. So now the stuff can start going back together. I actually did use some aluminum brightener on this head try to clean up some of that too. I think I'll end up probably powder coating that cam cover, but for now I'll put it back together the way it was. I did some more research on this right here and it's an AIS system, it's air induction. So it'll suck in air from the boot right here and from this valve right there. So it's gonna go to this valve, then all the way back and this is where it attaches to that boot right here. So I think I'm going to delete that just because I don't like extra crap there that doesn't need to be there. And apparently it helps it with popping on deceleration a little bit. And sometimes that valve can get stuck open. So I'm going to take that off there quick. Now time for the boot. I actually put another heat shrink plug into this, so air can't get through that right there. Got our K&N air filter in the mail today. Pull out our old China junk. I got everything set up here to put that top end back together. I prepped the surfaces for the cylinder, got everything ready to go back on. I'm gonna start with this, this is our coolant for the cylinder. This little doohickey right here is for the clutch cable and the parking brake cable. That'll keep them off the exhaust. Right here is where that tensioner will go, so 
when we're ready to tension down that cam chain. That'll go in right there and then tighten these down. Both of my bottom studs right there are still in the engine case, but we can slide these back in right here. Those two will help align the head to the position that those are supposed to drop into. So right now, cylinder should be pretty well good to go. That fresh Nicosil coating in there is looking pretty awesome. What I'm gonna do, try to clean out anything that might be left over in there. The cool thing about that Nicosil is Pretty much nothing can touch it or wear it other than dirt. So all that dirt and that intake that we were getting, that was what I assumed to be the main problem of why that wore through so soon. So right now I'm just getting out all the remains, anything that could have been left in there from replating and shipping dust in the shop that kind of thing what i'll do take just a little bit of oil i like doing portal oil in that cap and i can dip my finger in there a little too much and then whip that around That makes me pretty happy. That's not completely done. Still gotta check our ring gap before we put everything back together. Got my fresh rings right over here, so can't forget to do that. Since we're here, and it's super easy to do these out of the four-wheeler, I think I am gonna check the valves quick here. So what we're looking at right here are intake valves. So right here, we are dragging on 2,000 of an inch. Right here, can hardly make this one fit, so that one's gonna be a little bit less. The guy up, and so we're gonna loosen these up. Four barely goes, six does not, five does not. So I think I really like that. So I'll write that down here, this is my intake. Now it'll be my intake left, 4.5 thousandths of an inch, which is right in the spec here. That's our spec. 3.5 thou to 5.1 thou, so we're right on for that one. Right there, that feels pretty good. So that is on the tight side, 4.5 thousandths, right. I'm pretty sure there's an actual torque spec that these are supposed to get, but I think it is just a bolt spec rather than a seal spec because there's some nice O-rings on the inside of there. Pop this guy off. See what we have for our exhaust side. So look at a little bit bigger of a gap. Let's check right here. That is tight on seven. So it's left zero zero seven. Down just a little bit. Seven and a half does not, and seven does, so that looks good. Uh, 
All right, now that head is ready to be put in. I think we're going straight to the four-wheeler now. I'm gonna bring this bed right over here. So we're gonna look here. And top ring. We got our information right there. So we'll check that out. So what I'm looking at here, the piston, so we're looking at this one. This one's labeled RN. RN is our second ring in there. So now starting with the rings. So look for our R right here. You can see that's labeled R, so that's our top ring. And our top ring end gap is going to be eight thousandths to one point four thousandths. So to do that, compress this in there. Label will go on the top and use this to squish it down flat. And that does not go, so we are in spec for that one. Pull that guy out. Slide this guy in. Same thing, use our piston. So that's all right. There, pull that out, and we can actually assemble our piston here. Get a little oil on this thing to start, put on our bottom oil ring. So, looking right here. We can see our, where each of these belong. So we have this face right towards us. Lower ring is going to go right over here. So we're going to start with our oil ring expander. That's going to go right down the center with the exhaust. So this is the exhaust side right here. Okay. Now our upper is going right there. Now we're going to look at our second ring, which is our RN. It's going to face this direction. Perfect. We got our number or our letters facing upwards. Then this last ring. R is facing up. Okay, now we got everything figured out there. Now we can go rip off our old piston and get ready for the new one to go on. Well, that pin is gone and I am glad I got new ones. So here is our new piston next to our old piston. Make sure that everything slides together. Oh, that feels good. Yeah. That feels awesome. I like that. So I'll put this ring on here. Use a screwdriver. Slide that guy in there. And check that out. Bottoms out. We're ready to put this on just like so. Grab our fancy dancy ring setter. Oh, that feels good. I got my brand new base gasket. 
I'm gonna put this guy on. Facing this way. Now it's time for our jug. Now what I'm doing is dropping each of these bolts into their holes. I'm using just a little bit of oil around those threads and around the washers to make sure that when I torque it down, it's an accurate torque reading. So I am torquing these down right now. And it's gonna go on two different steps. So first one is 11 foot pounds, which is right there. And then one more time. And this one is 36 foot pounds. That feels pretty good. Now that that's all together, I'm gonna drop in our second chain guide. And torque these two right here. It's to seven and a half. Yep, that feels like it's moving good. Next up, I can drop on my head gasket. All right, head gasket is on. I went with OEM just because they say that OEM is the best that you can go with. I had a Tusk one that I bought for my last four-wheeler. And I think it was just a manufacturer defect, but it only had one of the layers in the gasket setup. So it ended up leaking coolant and I didn't notice right away when I was installing it. So I had to pull the whole head off just to replace a gasket, which was pretty dumb. So just buy the OEM, buy once, cry once. That's the only way to do it. I'm going to try to rock this as close to top dead center as I can get it. And then reach right through here. I'm going to slide these right into there, spin those down a little bit, get ready to drop in the top ones. I'm doing the same thing where I'm lubing up the threads and the faces. The shorter two go over here, the longer two go up here. Spin those down quick, those are 12 millimeters. And then underneath here, there's those two bottom studs. Look at this one. And 
now I'm torquing these top ones. It's a 25. Last but not least, are these two guys. Now I'm going to do the timing. So we're gonna open up this cap right here to make sure we're at top dead center. So I can put my gear back on. My gear is gonna line up straight to the top there. So now that the timing is lined up right there, I can put my tensioner on. So I put the gasket on like so. And this only fits one way actually. So let's flip that 180. On right there. Now I can put a spring in. And then put these guys in. Now I can cover this guy back up. <clears throat> and I'll bring it back over to this side. I'll pop this oil line back on. Pop this guy back in. Feels good. So now I can come around here and start connecting some of my lines. I can actually mount my throttle body too right now. And then I'll put this here until that block off plate gets either made or I order one. I'm gonna slide my exhaust gasket back in and wrap my header around. gonna slap that exhaust back on just because I want to hear it run tonight but I think I'm gonna take that off and clean that up a little bit more so what I'm doing right here this is the coolant bleed so when I pour in the coolant I can bleed out the air up until that point right there I'm not sure if this setup will work or not but my plan, I'm all set up here to pour coolant in the radiator. And hopefully that will come out down there. Alright. Got all the bubbles coming out there. on here getting a little excited so I'm not gonna bolt it down quite yet just want to make sure everything goes well there. the 
the battery is drained, so hooking up jumper cables. Hopefully I won't need a new battery, but we'll see. All right, we're all set there. Turned on, fuel pressure. Um, spark plug wire is not connected. I wanna get some of the oil up through there. So I am having a little bit of a trouble getting it to want to go. I'm wondering if I just forgot to connect the wire or something. So I'll connect that doohickey. And that's actually gonna show me check engine light if I have one. Oh, it's the clutch, not in neutral. That was silly. So no spark plug attached. I'm just gonna turn it over for a little bit here just to get the oil flowing to the top end. All right, that should be good. Attach that spark plug back up. It's feeling good. Should be ready to go. All right, that's a win in my book. She is running good. So, what that tells me is I am ready to go. I'm gonna probably do an oil change on it before I run it too much. Just to get some fresh oil in there. But I am running good and I'm ready to go on cosmetic stuff from here on out. So before I run it too much here, I am gonna do a quick oil change on it. Oil was looking pretty black in the head and I want some fresh oil for setting those rings. Nice and clean of course. Ah oh, jeez. Now that's the pain in the ass. I'll go fishing. There, we got her back. So what I got here is a new K&N oil filter. Fit in like that. Before you make fun of me about my cheap oil taste, I'm not gonna run this oil for too long. They say do not run synthetic for breaking in your rings. And I'm not gonna run this oil for too long. I'm gonna put the good stuff in before I take it out on any long trail rides. Dumping this in. So I'm going half right into the crank and then this half right into the tank. Next step is gonna be the exhaust, putting that on a little bit better. And this guy. Kind of a funny story. So when I got to putting it back together, I wanted to run it one more time quick. And when I tried to start it up, the thing would just not go. So I was wondering what was going on with that. And it was giving me a code of 43. So that flashes right here on this guy. And it'll do four slow flashes and then, or actually four six it was giving me. And it'll give me four slow flashes and then six fast flashes. So I did some research and that was like a low voltage code or something. And it was really confusing because I had the jumper pack on it. 
I was expecting something around the battery to be bad when realistically it was the spark plug. So I actually stole the spark plug out of that one and put it on this one and it started right back up again. Didn't include any of that in the video. Just because that was a little bit of a dumb hassle. So another thing I have to do is add in a hour meter. So for the last one, I made a little mount that went kind of like right here. But I think for this one, I'm going to wire it to mount right on the airbox there with some Velcro. So right now what I'm doing is zip tying this up. Should have done it with the gas tank off. That would have been a smart idea. Same thing. And right there. Now I'm going to slap these plastics back on. And the reason I'm putting these white ones back on is because the ones that I ordered are not supposed to get here until June 3rd. So I am a little more impatient than that. So I'm gonna slap these bad rides on for a little bit. And I think I might order from somewhere else just so I can have those new plastics in a reasonable time. Slide this piece on here quick. And for the final piece, this is a temporary one. This is off of my nice floor there. But just as a temporary until I get, I think I'll actually put this seat on this floor there really, and then get a new seat cover for the other one. I am going to go grab a helmet so I can take you guys along. And let's take this thing out for its maiden voyage. So I've heard a couple different theories about how you want to break the engines in and the consensus I've come to is you kind of got to ride it like you're going to because you only have so long to set those rings in and once you set those rings you either set them at a low RPM let them idle like this or you set them actually how you're going to ride them. So, just got back from a quick ride. Thing runs like a champ. I'd almost say that you can almost feel the power over the 2006, but not really the best riding terrain to compare it to. So, we'll see once we get some dirt on the ground, see what those Fox tracks on that other one does compared to these Pogos. It did have a little bit of a rattle in the front end, I noticed. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but then right here, 
I think the tie rods need a little bit of adjustment. It had a little bit, uh, tie rods need some alignment. And then, yeah, like right there is straight, but you can see the bars are a little bit twisted. And then the tie rod ends might need some adjustment because we got a little bit of wobble in there. Otherwise, she did really good. Front tires, absolutely nothing on those things. So definitely needs new tires. But up next in the next video, uh, going to jump right into the cosmetics of things. So talking about that plastics, going to get plastics ordered from a different company. We'll replace those. Um, got some new Nerf bar nets that we ordered. Put those on as well as straightening this out just a little bit. Got a fancy teal powder coat that I think I'm going to go with. So figure out what we're doing with the bumper, uh, Nerf bars. Going to do those heel guards too, as well as a few other things. Not as in-depth as the other one, but she is getting ready to go. And that snow out there, it, it wants to melt. So it's only a matter of time for we're ripping up the Wisconsin trails again all right and so now she runs and we will catch you on the next video